Hey guys, Shiba here with another video. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a main menu in a reel, uh, which uh, can be controlled from keyboard and controller. I have made a simple uh, user widget here, which is a simple menu with three buttons that does absolutely nothing right now. And I have a new game, a load game, and a quit game button. These are simply uh, three buttons here. I have done nothing special except for adding these two colors that are called lime and banana. Now, I'm gonna show you really soon why I have these two colors and what uh, we want to achieve. So first thing first, uh, you can see the first problem in the project is that my mouse is disappearing and I want some kind of user experience that keep the mouse, the keyboard and the controller. Of course, you can change that if you want. Uh, so to keep this user experience, I'm gonna start in the widget by creating, uh, by adding a event construct. In this event here, we're gonna set the uh, game input mode. So set game input and uh, we're gonna do set UI UI only. Uh, I want UI only in this case, and for from the player controller. Uh, here we are gonna drag and give it the player controller it wants. Okay, uh, pretty simple so far. And if I compile and save, you can see I now can keep my cars. Okay, if you have any problem or you want to be extra safe, you can also do set mouse, uh, uh, show mouse cursor, sorry, show mouse cursor and you can set the mouse cursor, set it to true and it will just uh, be here for good, okay? Now I don't need it, so we can just click and have the experience and by default, uh, this is pretty cool, Unreal have accessibility uh, for tab by default, so if we tab we can uh, navigate in the menu and press enter to call it. So first thing first, uh, you already know this probably. So to give a the button a purpose, we're gonna set is on click events. So for simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just gonna print a string when it's clicked right now. Okay, so we're gonna say new game is starting okay we're gonna make three print string more and we're gonna do this load game is starting okay and here we're gonna do quit is starting okay so let's add a on click function uh, on click event sorry for the other buttons just for debugging, so we know that everything is working as intended. And now we have three buttons that do actually something. Compile and save. If we play now and they click the buttons, the console log is showing me what I'm clicking, okay? So this is the basic, uh, really simple. Now let's make a A, our menu uh, fence, you know. So the first thing we need is a variable here, which is gonna be an integer. So let's call it uh, menu navigation index. Okay. I don't like the. Okay, perfect. Now. Let's make it a, an integer, sorry, an integer, because uh, we need a, an integral number. And uh, with each button, we also uh, want to have our uh, over function for each button. We want to have another function. 
So for each button, we're gonna need an overhead. And later I'm gonna show you why. So an overhead and an on overhead. Wait, okay. For now, let's just uh, set here our integer. So let's say uh, 0, 1, and 2. So now that we have this basic setup here, uh, we want to uh, get a reference for each button, you know? And for doing this, I've seen many people uh, doing like that. I'm gonna control and drag this here to get a get reference. And I've seen people doing this. They get a reference for each of the button and then they do make array, okay? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but you will have to add each button to the array manually uh, each time, which is not uh, quite uh, the best thing here. Instead, you can just add buttons. Just make sure you don't add any spacer or something, just buttons in this panel, and then space them with padding or something, like, like I did, okay? So we don't want to do this. Instead, we want to go to the designer and make the menu uh, menu panel a variable, okay? So check on, click on the menu panel and check is variable. Easy. You will now find it here. So let's drag uh, the menu panel. And from the menu panel, we're gonna drag the pin out and do, uh, let's search for children and we get, uh, get all children. What this is doing, uh, this is getting a reference for each item in the menu panel, which is one, two, and three button, okay? This is all we need. So now we have the same thing as doing make array, but without adding buttons manually. From there, we can now do a for each loop, okay? So what we are doing here, uh, the for each loop is iterating uh, all these elements. And now uh, what we can do with this is uh, add uh, this to a reusable array, okay? So we want to make the reusable array I was talking before. So let's make a variable and let's call it menu items. This is gonna be uh, of type uh, uh, widget, okay? Gonna make it of type widgets. Uh, widget, here we go. And let's make it an array from here, array. Let's drag the array on the loop. Sorry. Let's drag the array here and drag the pin out and we're gonna uh, add the items to this array. So let's write down add and press enter. Now we can connect this to the loop, okay? And we're gonna do the widget object reference to the array element. What this is doing is uh, every time uh, this is iterating the item, it is adding it to the array, okay? So we are making a list that we're gonna use later. So we don't have to hard code any buttons in this case. For limitation of a real, we're gonna have uh, a lot of hard coded stuff, but at least this is possible, so why not? This is a little bit more clean. Now, let's make a function that change the over color of these buttons, okay? So let's make a function. Let's call it uh, update uh, button state or something. Uh, whatever do you want. And inside this, uh, we're gonna actually use uh, our re reusable array. So let's get the array. 
and do a for each loop. From here, we're gonna connect it to the exec. And now, uh, we're also gonna need uh, the index I made, I, I told you to make before, okay? So what we're gonna do is get the array index of the loop and check if it is, is if this is equal to our uh, current index that we have selected in the menu, which for now we are changing on over. Now, for the boolean value here, we're gonna drag off and do a branch. But now we have to target the uh, color and opacity of the button. So if we do set color and opacity, it is not coming out. That's because uh, we have a type of widget and this is returning a general object. So how to make this of type button or whatever we need. So let's just drag off the pin and let's say cast to button and it's this way we are targeting the button itself okay now that we are targeting the button we can actually do some stuff so we can uh, set color and opacity and we can get another set color and opacity okay now uh, we can connect the set color and opacity to the branch so if it's true we get a color if it's false we get another color okay so now uh, we're gonna connect the button to the branch and now we have our condition and it should be pretty much uh, everything uh, that we need in here so we can just set the color. So when the array index is equal to navigation, and it's true, we're gonna get the banana color. And when it's not, we're gonna get the normal color of the button, okay? So compile and save. Now uh, we should be able to try this. So I'm just gonna hook the function to each uh, other function here, our event. Now when I play and I over, uh, we have a bit of a problem because uh, we have set uh, the color and opacity. Instead, we want to set the background color because this is a button and not a text block. So oh, that was my bad. So let's quickly change them. Okay. So banana. And line. Compile and save. And now we have the desired effect, okay? So over it, over it, over it, and it's change. And that's pretty easy. We have a mouse selection here, okay? We are changing the index uh, on over. This is the basic uh, functionality of our menu. Our buttons already have a click action, so there's really not much to do here. So we can go and move to the next step. So let's go back in the event graph. Let's leave it like this for now. Okay, in the end graph now, uh, we want to uh, address a problem. We want this to start uh, selected, okay? And uh, to do this, it's actually pretty easy. Since we already have the update button state function, all we need to do is drag it in the graph and connect it to completed on this for each loop in the event construct that we have made before. Now, if we compile and save and play, we're gonna see it is already selected, just like magic. 
This is because when the iteration is complete and is, uh, the loop is done adding the items to the array, it is gonna call the completed uh, execute. Okay, that's really simple as it is. Okay, so now let's get our end dirty and let's implement uh, keyboard and controller support. That is the reason why you are on this video, okay? So the first thing to do it uh, is that we need to add an override function. So I'll go to the function here on the left, go to override and do uh, on key down, okay? This event here is gonna be called every time uh, we press something on the keyboard or everything else. Now this is gonna be a little bit hard coded, don't hate me. And this is the uh, one of the limitations of Unreal too. Maybe you can do it better, I don't know, but this is my way. So uh, to debug this, uh, we have this uh, on key down and return node. Uh, let's set the return node to handled. And for debugging, we are gonna do a print string. And from the in key event, we want to do uh, get key. So we're getting the key that is uh, getting pressed right now. And get the display name from here so we can debug and connect it to the return node. Okay. Now compile and save and play and try pressing everything on the keyboard. You will see that we have the uh, things that we need. Now, uh, going in the canvas, going in the main menu in the hierarchy of your widget blueprint, uh, you probably don't have this checkbox checked, which is, is focusable. Uh, you need to check this to make the onkey down working. Now, if you see if I disable it, uh, nothing is coming up. So if you're wondering why nothing was coming up for you, it's because you don't have this selected. So the widget needs to be focusable. So just check it, compile and save, and now you can see the keyboard that you are, the keys that we are pressing on the keyboard or on the controller. Okay. Now let's get back to the logic. In this onkey down, we're gonna do a bunch of things. So let's move this a little bit away and let's focus on our uh, get key. So from here, we're gonna do equal. Okay, we're gonna actually need a bunch of them for each of the key uh, we need. You can also do, uh, you can also do um, an on switch by string, but uh, for having multiple buttons, this is uh, the best options, okay? Now, let's start by dragging off a branch. A branch in a real is a simple if statement, just for letting you know. So on this branch, uh, the first thing we want to check is that uh, our S button is being pressed, okay? And we want as well uh, to check if our arrow down button is getting pressed. But then uh, we have the controller. We want to have the controller support. So I'm just gonna plug uh, quickly the controller in. Here we go. And now I'm gonna press the... Uh, I have a little bit of a problem with the controller, so... Okay. Now, I'm gonna press the D-pad down and we want to check these two. And also, if you want, you can also uh, control when the uh, thumbstick left is down to scroll in the menu, okay? So now we have four buttons, which is S, arrow down, uh, D-pad down, and thumbstick down, left. Uh, so that means we are supporting keyboard and controller. So 
we are going to do an or here and we're going to add more pins and connect everything okay to this uh, or we're going to connect the branch so now when uh, one of these buttons is getting pressed so let's connect the get key here otherwise we get nothing so when each of these buttons is being pressed, it is going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false and do another branch. Okay. And we do the same thing here. Instead, we're going to check for everything that goes up. So W, uh, sorry, W and arrow up. Let's make another two. And let's do D-pad up and thumbstick up. Let's get another OR port, connect all the pins. Let's get another get key here. Connect it. And we connect it up. Oops. Okay. And we connect it to the branch. So, what uh, is going to happen now? Every time uh, we are changing this, uh, we want to uh, update uh, the index up and down. Okay, so let's get our index. Okay, so compile and save. And now, how do we do that? Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, go for the down option here. So when going down, we actually want to uh, increase navigation, okay? So for increasing the navigation, of course, uh, we're going to do a add integer plus integer, okay? So let's do uh, our index navigation plus one. So we are increasing the index. From there, we're gonna check if it, uh, it is greater than, and we're gonna say a greater than our menu items array length. The length is returning uh, the, the count of all the item presents in the array, okay? Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit bugged, so what we're gonna do is uh, minus one because it happens, uh, I don't know why, that it has uh, one, more, more, one more item than it should. So we are removing it. So we get the correct count, okay? Connect the minus one to the, uh, the check here. And then we're gonna drag uh, from here. And we're not doing a branch this time, we're doing a select, okay? We're making a select, this one. So when this returns uh, true, It is going to be actually uh, zero. So how to do this, we're going to set the menu index here and say zero. And the false, we are going to connect it to the plus one here. Okay. And we can connect the uh, branch from the true pin to the set menu navigation. And after we have uh, set the navigation, we are, uh, we are going to update the button state again, so we can connect it to the terminal now. And that's pretty much it. 
Now if you compile and save and play and we move uh, the S key, it is scrolling the menu, okay? Even with this and even with the control. Now we have to do the same thing uh, to go up actually. So again, we're gonna need our index. From our index this time, instead of adding, uh, we are going uh, back up, so we're going back to zero, and we are subtracting, so minus one, and then we're doing a uh, check if it's less than, okay, zero. We do again a select from this, select, okay. This time the uh, default spin goes to the minus here, minus one. And the uh, true spin this time goes to uh, our menu items array. Again, we get the length. Oh, the length. I can't write length. So we get the length again. We do minus one again because we want to get the index correct. And we connect this to true. Okay. And again, we're gonna set the menu index from select and connect it to the true exec of the branch here that gets the uh, down keys, uh, the, the up keys, sorry. And same thing, we're gonna connect it to the update button state and the return node, okay? Simple as that, we compile and save, and now we can freely scroll with the controller up and down. Actually, the thumbstick is not working for some reason, but the debug is working fine. The keyboard is working fine. And for some reason, the left thumb stick is not getting detected. But basically, this is how it works, okay? I don't really know why the thumb stick is not working. Whatever. So this is how you get the controller and keyboard uh, support in the, in the menu. Now you might be noticing that we don't have a click event. So now we have to uh, get a click function. And this is gonna be uh, hard coded, I'm sorry. I didn't found a better solution yet on a real, unfortunately. So we're gonna get a key again. This time uh, we're gonna do Okay, let's do like this. So this time uh, we're gonna get the key again. And uh, we want to, let's say for the controller, we want uh, the A key. And for the, um, for the keyboard, we want enter, okay? Let's get in our port again. So one and two. Let's make another branch. Let's connect it to the uh, false branch that we had before, the, the old branch, the false. And connect the condition. And now uh, we can, um, on the true exec here, pin, we can do some hard coding uh, to make the uh, click event, okay? It's gonna be a little bit bad. Uh, so, uh, the first thing we need is, of course, our uh, array. And in this case, uh, we have different options. Uh, one of the options is to compare with each button. So, 
Uh, we're gonna add each button uh, manually, and we're gonna defeat the purpose of the array, okay? Which is uh, I, which I don't want, of course. So let's try uh, in a different way. Let's do a get. Or not. We uh, we actually can do instead of doing a get, we get a we get the index, okay? And we do equal directly. That's maybe uh, easier. That's probably easier, yeah. No array. Let's make it even cleaner. That's that is better. So uh, we're gonna unfortunately hard code every index. Okay, so in this way we are not adding each button manually, but instead we are going to compare uh, the index that we are in right now. That's a little bit unfortunate, I know. And we have to make a bunch of branch... Uh, or no, 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 even better, even better. So since I am a clean uh, coder, we probably can do a switch on int or a... Select, let's say. Let's see which one is better. No, let's not select int, it's select. Uh, okay, I can do a select. No, that's not what we want. Uh, well, the one we want is this. Let's remove the default pin. And let's do one, zero, one, two. So this way we can simply add every index and it's really much cleaner. This is a little, this is a way better solution than the one I found before. Uh, okay, kudos to me. So now we can simply connect a function here. It's really that simple. So since Unreal is a little bit uh, strange on certain things, I can target the overhead event or the click event, okay? So instead we're gonna make three custom events. So new game, uh, click, because I can't uh, give it the same name, custom event, load game, click, and quit uh, custom event. Quit uh, game click. That's connected to the place that we need a click function. And we can do like this. Or if you want to place the buttons everywhere uh, in other place, you can do like a new game click. Okay? Instead of calling it uh, from here. So you can just have this somewhere else. So for this tutorial I'm going to do it this way. So load game click here. And we leave it like there. And the quit game here. And we do quit game. Uh, what, what am I doing? Quit game, click. That's what is not showing up. What, what have I done? Oh, it's a typo. Quit game, click. So we do quit game, click. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Compile and save. And now we play. And if I use the controller to scroll the menu, and click A, I'm gonna get anything. I'm not gonna get anything for some reason. Let's see what is going on on the key down. I probably made a mistake, and yeah, I didn't uh, connect the uh, things here, so. Sorry, uh, just. I just forgot to add them. So quit game, click, okay?
compile and save. Play. And it should work now. Bam. See? Now you have controller support. Let's, three, let's see with the keyboard. Work really fine. And you can uh, scroll and click on the menu. It's simple, it's clean, and it works properly. Okay? And you don't have to hard code any button. Thank you really much for watching, guys. And hope you support my work and my upcoming games. See you in the next video. Bye.